In my last video, we removed the disgusting 305. This video will cover removing some odds and ends. Start by getting the front end on jack stands and then remove the wheels. Remove the caliper brake hose, followed by the chassis brake line. Reinstall the wheel and put the car back on the wheel cribs. The complete front brake lines are then removed. Unscrew the fuel line and brake line brackets, working your way underneath the car. The torque arm and the exhaust were in the way, so I had to unbolt them. Keep in mind that the axle will want to tilt forward without the torque arm attached. Remove the rear exhaust hanger mounts. I had to unbolt the shocks and remove the torque arm support bar in order to drop the axle far enough to get the exhaust out. It was surprisingly difficult to remove the stock exhaust system. Work your way down the transmission tunnel and remove more fuel and brake line brackets. The filter housing is unscrewed. The rear brake line is removed, and man, that brake line was really stuck on there. A rubber cap keeps the brake fluid from dripping all over. The bracket is unbolted and the pressure valve is carefully removed. I started removing the gas tank fuel lines, only to find there was a lot more gas in the tank than I thought. I then used a hose to drain as much gas out as I could. Because I won't be using a full length exhaust system, I removed all the factory heat shielding. The fuel pump is unplugged and the fuel lines are capped off. Remove the fuel tank straps and then drop the tank. And back to the engine bay, remove the two rubber hood stops. Remove the many clip-on barrel nuts, or some call them U-nuts. Also remove any lingering plastic wire holders. The support bracing on the top and below the driver's side fender is unbolted. I lightly cleaned and vacuumed up the engine bay.
this airbag sensor bracket needs to go. It's held in by two bolts behind the core support. The front spot welds will need to be drilled out. I used a flat faced drill bit for this. I ended up getting a bit too aggressive and denting the metal a little bit. I drilled out any rib nuts I had installed previously. Now it's time to fire up the welder and fill in some holes. I drilled out some mild steel scrap to help me fill these holes. I used mild steel filler wire and started welding the hole shut. This kit lens that came with my welder was pretty terrible, so filling in these holes was way harder than it should have been. And just a word of warning, there is some galvanized steel on third gens, so if you see any yellow burn marks when you're welding, please wear a respirator, you do not want to be breathing that in. After welding, grind the welds flat with an abrasive wheel. The goal here is to get the filled in holes flat enough for paint. I decided to fill in some front core support holes as well. A quick run with the grinder and the paint is gone. This ID plate is removed as I'll be making a better one later on. I went ahead and stripped more paint because I was already there with the grinder so I might as well. A quick solvent wipe gets the metal nice and clean. Using a thick aluminum block under the holes helps a lot with hole filling. The molten metal won't stick to the aluminum, so accidentally blowing through the hole is much harder. Start by adding weld wire to the edges of the hole, making your way inward. Try to think of it like stacking bricks of metal. And this new FUPA weld lens makes this a million times easier, especially in comparison with the other gas lens. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and follow me on Instagram for more content.